You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. Hey there, welcome to episode 247 of the Soul Forge podcast. Welcome to the Soul Forge, a place of silent mystery, quiet contemplation, and outright mayhem. Join your host, Sean Vanderloo, as he guides you through the adventures of living. Together, we'll talk about life and love, sex and dating, joy and heartache, memories and loss, and so much more. Don't worry, it's not nearly as pretentious as it sounds. Get ready for life, the universe, and everything on The Soul Forge. Hey all, welcome back to another exciting episode of the show. I'm your host, Sean, as always, and with me today is a special guest. He's super special. It's my brother, Curtis. The specialist. You are the specialist. That is true. So, this week, what we're going to talk about is things that we use to define us. And you and I have had several conversations about this, wouldn't you say? I would say several. At least several? At least several. That's what I thought. Verging on more than several. Really? Really. Has it been that many? Uh, I think so. That's quite a bit then. Randomly. Yes, and none of those are recorded. They are not recorded. For posterity. No. For reference purposes. But we're going to do one more legal. That is also true. Yes. So uh, you've been on the podcast a couple times. Three or four. Yeah. And and how do you feel about that? Do you do you like being on the podcast? You know, it makes me feel like a Sioux celebrity. A Sioux celebrity. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because Be- I'm from the Sioux. Yeah. And I'm on the podcast that is getting millions of views. Yes, because it is superb. Superb soul forging. That's right. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's time to talk about things that define us or the things that are things that do not define us, as the case may be. So That sounds Shakespearean. Does it? It does. Alas, poor York, I knew him well. To define us or not to define us. What's the question again? That is the question. Ah, that's the question. Yeah. And... It's always fun when you're on the show because our witty banter is out of this world. The wittiest? Except for when wit is on the show. Then then it is truly the wittiest. That is true. And wit has not been on the show in quite some time. Uh, Uh, I I do have to track him down because he's trying to do a podcast. And uh, he hasn't gotten it off the ground yet. And I think he's been at it for more than a year. Oh my goodness. Uh, I know. So he needs... Uh, expertise. And you are the expert, Mr. 237th episode. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. No! Two hundred and forty seventh episode. Yeah, plus the three hundred and some I did on Rusted Robot podcast. Uh, absolutely, and the dozens and dozens I did with uh, Paul and Dan. And if I carry the one correctly, that's at least over seven hundred episodes. <laughs> that, was, that was an accounting joke. Yeah, is, is, was it funny? It was very funny. Because you're an accountant. Because I'm an accountant, that I carried the one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So back to the topic at hand. So not an accounting podcast. All right. No. Duly noted. Right. Because yeah, that that actually that's something I have never covered on the podcast before. Is what it means to be an accountant. And maybe you'd like to regale the listeners with that one day. Maybe I would, but not on this episode. Not today. Today that is not the question or the answer. Correct. Okay. So throughout my entire life, I have used external stimuli or circumstances to define who I am. Would you agree with that? Uh, as you've told me, I, I would agree with that because you often tell me that uh, the things that you surround yourself uh, are what you identify with. That's and, right. Um, make make you who you are. Exactly. But do they make me who I am? Only you can tell me that. Okay. Well, I'm telling you that for my entire life, up until quite recently, I decided that my things were who I was. And I don't like that anymore. Oh. Yes. Yes. For example, uh, ever since I can remember, 
I have been a collector, and that's what I was known as. I am the collector. I'm the Star Trek guy. I was the poet in uh, university. I was this. I was that. I was the uh, teenager who would sit in the uh, middle of the apartment, apartment complex selling my stuff to the neighborhood kids in the middle of the summertime. I remember quite uh, quite a number of years ago, we were we were living together in said apartment complex. And uh, we, I was a child. Uh, I can't even remember how old I would have been. How old would I have been? Four years younger than me. Yeah. And when did we move into that apartment? 1987. Uh, all right. So I was maybe eight or nine years old and uh, you stumbled upon a collection of beer caps and bottle caps. And uh, it was at least a thousand or more in this box. And uh, you loved it. You couldn't get enough of it. And I don't know if that started your collecting period or not, but uh, that was a contributing factor, I'm sure. Uh, well, I've always been a collector. I have always had a junk drawer. Uh, one of my first memories is sitting in front of my dresser at uh, our father's house, uh, going through my dresser of collectibles. Who art thou father? Yeah, that's right. And uh, that, uh, let me think. I think we moved out of there when I was about four or five. So that's how long ago that was. That's 40 some years ago. Huh. And that's one of my earliest memories. I've always had stuff. Stuff. Yeah. And I guess you could say I come by it honestly. I would say that is correct. Since, uh, Since both, both of our parents would collect stuff. All kinds of things. All kinds. Didn't matter what it was. You name it, it's probably obtained. That and, is And true. held on to. Uh, yes. Yes. And somehow... Both Robin and I also got this collecting gene. Yeah. E- even though Brother Robin has a different father. It's true. Has the same but mom. But the same mom, so. That's true. Uh, but you don't have it. I would say I do not have it. You are not a collector of things. I, I try not to be a collector of things. And that is a very lucky thing. Uh, because I will tell you, hauling all this crap around for years and years is not fun. I, I could see that. However, I guess I don't have the things that you have, so maybe that makes me sad. But you know what won't make you sad? What's that? Listening to this promo for another podcast right here on the ESO I Network. love this promo. Hey, Martha. What? Do you like nerd stuff? I do. And do you like adult beverages? I super do. <laughs> well, then you should join us with a drink. With a drink. With a drink. On But first, let's talk nerdy. Clink! <laughs> on the ESO Network. We'll see you on Tuesday. Maybe next Tuesday. Maybe. Did, did you love that promo? That was my favorite promo yet. I, I thought it might be. That, was... uh, that's, that is a podcast that I will listen to going forward. I, I thought it might be. That's why I chose it. It was an excellent choice. Good. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Yep. So, it, so the last few years what I've decided to do is downsize my collection because I was always defining myself as a collector. I'm the Star Trek collector. And so let me ask you something about this. Go ahead. The first thing that you downsized. Yeah. How did that make you feel? Uh, Honestly, I don't remember what it was. Hmm. So I guess it wasn't that important to me. Um, And as you started to thin out your collection after this catalyst moment, uh, did you feel like you were giving away a part of yourself? There were moments, uh, depending on what the thing was. If I have an emotional attachment to it for some reason. Sentimental. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, a lot of sentimental stuff. And what would be a definition or what would be an object that would have that sentimental value to you? Well, I would probably say that my Star Trek Hallmark ornaments would have a sentimental attachment since it was a mom tradition. That she See, would and I can, I can appreciate that. So, um... You know, in, in that regard, had mom bought me these ornaments every year for Christmas, I would have a hard time letting go of those because that's a present. And I wouldn't necessarily consider it a, a collection piece. So I, I can fully identify with why that would uh, be sentimental to you. Okay, well, that's good. So you get it. I get I get it. Yeah. And and I've had so much stuff. And I've, I've got 30, between 30 and 40 totes of just things. And I've moved a lot in my life. Mm-hmm. And moving these things around, uh, not fun. Uh, I, I remember when I was, I think, 18, and I decided, well, every intelligent person needs to have a library or a book collection. And so I started collecting books that I liked, not realizing 
how heavy they are when you add them up. Books are very heavy. Yeah, and I tend not to read them more than once, so why am I keeping them? I don't know. Absolutely. And for a tip for anybody that's going to move, don't box all your books together. Split them up into other packages so that those boxes aren't as heavy. Exactly. Just just a pro tip, life hack, yeah, if it's you a, will. It's a thing I've learned along the way. Yes. Yeah. Cause Important holy. for people to know that. Yeah, because you, you would think, oh, they're all books. We'll just put them in the same box. Exactly. But then it just means it's too heavy. Maybe half the book. Half the box could be books. Half the box, absolutely. The Dep- rest could be throw pillows. For sure. Yeah, because yeah. you need something light in there. Yeah. If it's dictionaries, probably not a half a box. Probably not. Maybe a yeah. third. Maybe a third. Right. But yeah. why do you have more than one dictionary? It could be different languages. Oh, you might have a Klingon dictionary, an English dictionary, and a French to English dictionary, or maybe Spanish, or whatever other thing you would like. Exactly. Uh, different editions. Uh, new words get added to dictionaries all the time. That's true. And I, I actually do have a big, thick, heavy dictionary that I bought back in university because I was an English major. Uh, have I looked at it recently? No. no. Do are, I? are you a dictionary of the year club a member? Is that a thing? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it probably is. I wouldn't be surprised. And it would be funny. So we're going to have to Google that later. Dictionary of the month club. Oh, I would say dictionary of the year club. So once a year. Once a year. Because, yeah, you might not I want... can't see a new dictionary coming out once a month. That would be awfully weird that would be awfully weird i don't think new words are invented that often no but you might need your ukrainian dictionary you might oh need that your, is true uh, uh, your australian slang dictionary you know yes there are many types of dictionaries out there so that is quite correct and and if there is not a club of said uh, avenue then maybe that's our new business plan oh that's a good idea <laughs> you sound like brother robin <laughs> <laughs> mr get rich quick scheme and never make any money so yeah, so anyway, long story short is over the last few years, I've decided to start downsizing. It's difficult though, because I've had this stuff for like 30 years, some of it. Right. But as everybody knows, because I've mentioned it multiple times, uh, Rusted Robot Toys on Etsy was opened at the end of June last year, and I've started selling some of my things. Yes, you have. And is it difficult sometimes? I'm like, yeah, a little bit, because uh, I've had it for a long time, but you know what? Uh, maybe somebody will want it and they'll pay money for it. So let me ask you this. Yeah. The things that you post on Etsy, Mm -hmm. uh, because you have such a vast collection. Yes. Are you choosing the things you less identify with early on here? Uh, Or have you ever posted something that uh, has that sentimental attachment? Uh, I, I think I've put a few sentimental things on there, but mostly it's things that aren't, uh, vital to my identity as a human so you're easing your way into it uh trying to gain some traction as you as you go along that, that's right in reforming yourself I, i'm i'm working up slowly yes because uh, you know you don't want to do something all at once and then uh, have a mental breakdown or something well exactly like upping your life and just moving cities randomly or something yeah that'd, that'd be weird that'd be like, weird nobody does that nobody does that. no no i wouldn't even uh, know how to begin to process no that. no exactly so yeah so that's that's not a thing Definitely not. But you, how do you define yourself if you're not a collector of things? Uh, or, or do you not define yourself? You're just, I, you're just I you. have worked very hard not to define myself. And in fact, uh, maybe that is defining myself. So uh, I am a sports fan. Mm-hmm. Uh, the team uh, I cheer for uh, most specifically is the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh However, uh, I avoid wearing too many Toronto uh, type clothing items. Okay. Uh, I don't put bumper stickers on my vehicles uh, because that's not who I am. Yes, I enjoy the Leafs, uh, but uh, if they have a terrible breakdown and lose the Stanley Cup playoff, uh, whatever. Um, Your identity isn't shaken? I'm not shaken. People will come and comment and and like try to rouse me or whatever. But honestly, it's, it's just a team I cheer for. Yeah, I'm disappointed that they didn't do well. Uh, but uh, because I don't identify as that... Uh, a, a leaf fan, ultra fan, whatever. Um, I, I don't want people to see me like that. And so I avoid uh, wearing uh, those clothes out in public unless I'm going to a game. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. And uh, another thing that I used to always do was throw stickers on my car uh, because my car is an extension of my personality. So, you know, I have uh, a 
for the last three vehicles I had, I had Mr. Spock for President bumper sticker. Uh-huh. Uh, the, the car that I had before the one I have now had like Batman stickers on it. Thunder. Uh, and what do you mean an extension of your personality? Um, I'm not sure how I can explain that to you. Because I've often heard people talk about vehicles as an extension of themselves. And for myself, my vehicle is a tool. Right to get me places and and to do the things I need. Mm -hmm. I have a truck because I plan to haul a trailer and sometimes I like to haul equipment and go camping. And so I have a, a, the the box that holds more things. So it fits my lifestyle, Mm -hmm. Uh, but I wouldn't call it an extension of myself. I would call it a tool. Okay. Uh, Well, for me, I've always decorated it up to uh, showcase my personality, like Mr. Spock for president. Yes. Uh, on this car here that I got last year, I have not put any stickers on the outside of it. And do you feel naked? Uh, not particularly. It's uh, it's something that I think about every once in a while. Like, oh, I should put that sticker on. But I don't want people to know it's me anymore. Like, I used to be the guy who had the, the black Mazda 3 with all the crappy stickers on it. And now I've got a Nissan Rogue, and everybody has a Nissan Rogue, so I'm incognito. And it's kind of cool. So you're hiding? No, I'm not hiding. Oh, okay. Because I, I still have my uh, my my what I don't know what you'd call it decoration on my mirror hanging down. You got a dice dangler from the mirror? I, I don't have a dice. What is it? Uh, I've got just a bunch of stuff. Like there's a rabbit's foot. There's a Mister Spock. There's uh, uh, keys on it. There, there's a skeleton key. And do you feel like that helps you identify in your vehicle? Uh, it's just gone from vehicle to vehicle to vehicle. Ever since I've had a car. So it's just consistent. But but it's on the inside. It's not on the outside. Oh, and what does that mean? It means uh, I still have seven more Mr. Spock for President bumper stickers. uh, Because I bought (laughs) ten from eBay one time. Maybe ten or twelve years ago. And they've been on every car except for this one. But I have enough left over. For all your future cars. uh, Till the end of my life, pretty much. Absolutely. Yeah. And do you think you'll end up putting this Spock sticker on this vehicle? Maybe, maybe not. I'm not really concerned. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get away from uh, being defined by my things. So you don't need it to be an extension of yourself at this point. Exactly. Okay. Yes, I, I'm trying to just be happy with who I am internally. and I don't have to be the poet. I don't have to be the collector. I don't have to be the Star Trek guy. But doing that, it's still hard to break some routines. So that's why you have the item on your mirror hanging down. And I just like that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, that's that's the way it's going. Uh, But I don't need the things to tell me who I am anymore. Hmm. And that's what this episode is all about. Yes. And so and so, what did the Sean the poet tell you who you were? You were. I was I was uh, the young intellectual. You know, oh, okay. You know, because uh, I, I went away to school and got an English literature degree, and I was like hanging around with all these people that were smart and you know all into semiotics and literary. And did you and... feel as smart as those people? No, I felt like a dumbass. And is that why you obtained the books to? No, this I got the books before I went away to school. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just it seemed like something that was a good idea. I see. Yeah. I kind of do things sometimes without really knowing what the outcome is going to be or why I'm doing them. Right. It seemed but, like a good idea. But Sean, at the, time. the poet, yeah, could match these intellectuals that you were hanging out with that you felt like you weren't really a part of. Uh, no, they were always way more into things than I was, hmm. and that's what I found too. For most of the things that I'm into, there's people that are way more into it because I just don't care enough. Yeah, I learned that early on in life that uh, anybody that I was competing with, there was always going to be somebody out there trying much harder to have more of whatever, uh, know more about a particular subject. Um, And I find that I try to kind of find the middle ground. I don't need to be the best at something, but if I'm interested, I I learn enough to know. Uh uh, And then I can go and if I need more details, go to the expert. I don't need to be that expert. I don't want to be that expert uh, because I like to have a broad range of abilities and talents and uh, understanding. uh, And yeah, that's, I guess that's how I identify myself as uh, somebody that kind of plays the middle. Um, And maybe that's the middle child uh, in me that... uh, does that as well i don't know hmm. and, and without a psychologist here to psychoanalyze us that's right we, 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 we don't can't. know we, we can't we know. can't know no that's right 
exactly. But uh, so yeah, that's that's what's going on here. I'm getting rid of things. Uh, it's being a little bit slower than I would like. But this weekend at Vintage Games and Junk here in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario on Queen Street from 11 to 5, I will be selling some of my things in the back room. So any local listeners who hear this in time, come check it out. It's this coming, uh, what is that, Saturday the 30th of April, 2022 for any time travelers. So anything else we should discuss or cover before we go? Uh think we're good i think uh that's plenty of uh self-identification for one evening sounds, self-discovery sounds about right so all you listeners out there make sure you take care of yourselves and each other check me out uh, on tech talk uh, i've been on there for a week now maybe nine days ten days and uh you are tick tocking it up i'm tick tocking it up and i'm putting out videos and i'm being ridiculous and it's fun and it's a time suck and a rabbit hole uh, soul forge podcast is my handle there surprisingly enough so anyway leave a five-star review for this podcast check it out everywhere that you can find fine podcasts and until next time remember the only person that can save you is you. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Soul Forge Podcast. Your support is greatly appreciated, and we hope you'll tune in again next time. Remember that you can visit soulforgepodcast.com for all of our social media links. And don't forget to share the show with everyone you know. The Soul Forge Podcast is your best source for living your best life. Think about it. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network. Be part of the crew and help support our shows by donating to our ESO Patreon or by shopping for the Tee Public Store, which can all be found at www.esonetwork.com. The ESO Network, your station for all things geek.